Partial differential equations, also known as PDEs, are a special type of differential equation that have the unique trait of being composed of the partial derivatives of different functions. These functions are independent of one another, and they are usually functions of x, y, z, or t, depending on what type of PDE one has. A special process known as the separation of variables may be used to solve homogeneous partial differential equations. A homogeneous PDE is one in which not every term contains the dependent variable or its partial derivatives. This process may only be used when the function is bounded and has initial conditions that allow one to figure out the constants in the answer. These boundary and initial conditions vary from problem to problem, depending on what type of PDE one is dealing with. For this demonstration, we will take a look at the Laplace equation, an equation that takes the form uxx plus uyy equals zero, as seen on the screen. Laplace equations are steady state equations in that they do not rely on time and as such can be used to analyze stress, temperature, or flows that are in their steady states. The first step for any PDE is to identify what the boundary and initial conditions are indicating should be happening in the final solution. A boundary condition is any point at which the dependent variable is specified. For this case, the PDE is analyzed on a rectangular section at which three of the four sides have a value of zero. The fourth side has a value of f of x across the edge, which is any function that is non-zero. After the conditions have been established, it becomes time to use the method of separation of variables to begin solving the PDE. Because each function is independent of the other, we can assume a few things about the solution, and the nature of each. uxx plus uyy equals zero can be rewritten so that it is made up of x double prime y plus y double prime x equals zero, due to our assumption that the functions are independent of one another. Additionally, following that same assumption, we can arrange the equations so that the variables are separated to either side of the equation, as seen on the screen. When two functions are equal at all points in time, we can also assume that they must be equal to a constant that we call lambda. This constant is what allows us to separate the variables and as such is known as the separation constant. To separate the variables, we take all the x terms and set them equal to lambda. And we take all the y terms and set them equal to lambda as well. After they are completely separated, we can rearrange them once again so now we have two ordinary differential equations made up of x and y independent of one another. There are three possible values for the constant of separation lambda, but all must be checked in order to see if they are part of the final solution for the equation. These are the cases when lambda is negative, equal to zero, or positive. For the positive and negative cases, p squared is used to simplify the solution for the eigenvalues. The first value that we are going to use for our separation constant is zero. Plugging in zero for lambda allows us to do some simple integration to come to the conclusion that our function is of the form x equals ax plus b. At this point, we can use our initial conditions to determine what our constants are. Doing so tells us if this equation will be part of our final solution. Plugging in all known values from our boundary conditions leads us to realize that the solution associated with this equation is the trivial case where x equals zero. As such, we exclude both the eigenvalue and eigenfunction for lambda equals zero. Moving on to the case where lambda is negative, we solve the ODE by creating the characteristic equation. Solving this characteristic equation gives us r equals plus or minus p. Once again, we plug in our initial conditions and the boundary conditions to identify what our constants are. Based on the definition of the hyperbolic sine function, this solution is trivial as well, as it will never equal zero. Having checked the other two values for lambda, we now only have the positive one remaining. And as such, we will repeat the same process as we did with the negative lambda, creating a characteristic equation and identifying what values for the constants fit the initial and boundary conditions. Unlike the other two cases, however, this case produces a non-trivial solution, as is seen on the slide. When the function c2 sine pa equals zero, either c2 or the function sine pa must equal zero. In order to avoid another trivial solution in which c1 and c2 are both zero, we make it so that sine pa is equal to zero. The eigenvalue for this function is any multiple of n pi divided by the length of the function, which for x is a. As a result, we write the function x as xn and the constant as cn to indicate the nature of that function. Now that we have the solutions for the function of x, we move on to the y function. Using the information that we have obtained, we plug in the positive lambda case into the function and solve it similarly to how we did it for the x function. Only the case when lambda is positive must be tested because the previous steps have already proven that the other two possibilities of lambda provide trivial solutions in x and as such will produce the same results in y. Doing so grants us another eigenfunction and eigenvalue. Now that we have computed our two functions x and y, 
we can begin to build the overall solution to the PDE. Recalling that the solution is a combination of the functions multiplied together, we are able to place the x and y functions together as seen in the slide. At the same time, we are also able to combine the constants into one single constant, and we'll call it a n. Because of the n's located throughout our solution, we must include a summation starting from 1 going to infinity. This accounts for all possible solutions resulting from what we have found. Solving for the constant requires an application of a Fourier series approximation. The initial condition of u x comma b equals f of x is applied to the solution to the PDE. This rewrites the solution as a half range expansion of the function f in a Fourier cosine series. A n tilde is identified as a n sine hyperbolic n pi b over a and can then be determined as is shown in the slide. Once the coefficient a n has been determined, the final solution can be created. Had an f of x been specified as a specific function, the integral that is included in the definition of a n could be solved so that an actual value could be added to the solution. Now that the solution has been found, we can state that we have fully solved the Laplace PDE. Although we solved the Laplace PDE for this example, this process can be applied to any PDE that follows the same requirements that were mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. This video is created by Daniel Silverio, Wyatt Nace, and myself, Cody Miller, for Dr. Julian's MA441 Honors Class at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Thank you very much for watching, and we hope you learned all about the method of solving a PDE with separation of variables.